Hello, welcome back to Go and Walk About. In the last two Flutter episodes, I've been working on two things. One, an image control that can do panning and zooming for profile images. And second, a photo picker because I didn't like the default implementations. In today's episode, I'll show you how I've implemented them in the project. For both the pan zoom image control and the photo picker, I initially built test projects. I have linked them in previous episodes and you can go and have a look of how I built them. In this episode, I implement everything into my main project and I'll show you the changes I had to make to make it work the way I want to have it. So let's first have a look and demo how they actually work and how it looks like. So here we see the application running and let's go to the profile because that's where most of the work happens because it all started with creating the profile image editor. Now I go to my profile and as you can see, I have a nice round circle as I had before, but only one pencil. So the thing with the multiple image pickers to compare them, it's all gone. We have one and I can select and here you can see my photo picker project. So what this actually does is I use the photo manager library, what is an excellent library to get photos on Android and iOS in a common, let's say library format that you can build your own user interface. So the user interface, as you see it here, is built by me and this is the way I want to have it. Simple, no choices, just pick some recent images. So let's pick an image and we select it. And now the image is loaded here. And uh, let's take a different one because this one gives a little bit of a better example. We see the image is loaded and now we can go and zoom or let's say pan the image. We could zoom, but zooming this only works from the center. So I cannot demo that here on the simulator. But the thing works. Now, one thing that is important, what changed from the previous test application to this one, is that now after selecting, it is immediately zoomed as covering. And the way I did that is as follows. So here we see the pen zoom image control. And in the state, we have an init the state. And now we set the controller value. So we had this zoom info function already. That's the function that determines the zoom factor to be applied to the image. And I use that here to get the zoom. And the zoom that I want to have is actually based on the aspect ratio. Because if you have an image what has it was like a landscape image, an aspect ratio of one point something, if you want to zoom it full screen, you need to scale it actually with the, with the um, uh, aspect ratio. So I calculate the aspect ratio, I set the zoom image, I set it on the controller. And if you remember that controller is actually here in the, in the state and the controller is linked to the component, to the interactive viewer, and that is used in two ways. So if you set the value in the controller, the interaction value will apply to that. That's what we also saw in the test project. And if you read the controller value, you get the current state. So the first thing I did is I calculate that zoom. I set that on the controller here. So it gets zoomed the way you want to have it full screen, no borders, no uh, top, bottom, left side, white area, just nice image. And the second thing I had to do is that when I start panning or zooming, I need to make sure that those events get registered in my business logic object. In the demo application, I had everything in one widget. That, that same widget had a crop button, but of course you cannot do that in a real application. So I also implemented here a function. Where I set my function? Oh, here, the unchanged function. And if that unchanged is set, then I pass my window size because the size of the round circle that you saw is set beforehand. And I need that to calculate all kinds of offsets and the matrix, and the matrix is the information about the zooming information. And then in that profile editor, where we are here, this is the profile editor. This is the image picker that we used. We set the image. Then when we have an image that's happening here. So if we have a picked image, so we don't have the default one because that's just the user image get displayed. But if we have in our snapshot an image because we have picked an image, we show that and we pass an unchanged. And the unchanged of that image will then update my block with the information about the zoom information so that later when I save, so if we are here in the 
simulator and if I press this save button, then my save on the block will get called and then can use the, can use the information about the zooming and the panning and make sure that the image get cropped correctly. So let's see if I can quickly show you that part because that is in my profile edit block. And here you can see if I update the user, then of course I have to update first the name in the bio. And then there's a second thing, I do the logic that was in my test project to crop the image. So we get the information. That's what we have passed through the callback about the zooming. We calculate the zoom, the scale factor. We do the factor with the original size compared to the size of the round circle that you want to have, etc. Then I get the original image from the data. I crop that image to the value, um, the, 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 the dimensions I want to have that I calculated here. And then I resize it. So I start with a huge image. I crop the selection I want to have, and then I resize it. And when I have resized it, I have a final image. I encode it again, and I set that as image data in my cache, and the whole thing works the same as it did before. Now, this is the implementation of both the image picker, because that didn't change much. It just returned me the asset that I picked, and the pan zoom image. But when I was at it, I also thought, you know, I have other places where I pick images. One example is here when I'm in my trip list and I create a new trip, you get a default image, but you can change that. And this is also a place where I changed the default implementation. I think I use the image picker here for my image picker to have a consistent behavior of picking an image. And I can pick an image and I can save it and it will show the image. And if I save it, it gets saved with the trip, etc. But both of these are still in a, in a single select. What I also did in my example project, I had a flag and I think it was hard coded initially on two images to be selected. I made that the parameter on the component so you can set it from the outside. In this situation, see, I can only select one and press done. But when you go to a trip, here I go to a trip and I try to create a post. Now I can say, okay, let me just pick images. Here I have added that I can pick multiple images if I want to do that. I said done and the images are nicely uh, shown here in a list of all the images shown. So you can see that I can use the same image picker in three scenarios having a consistent behavior of the applications. I like this a lot more because picking images is now an integral part of the application. You don't go to something externally and communicate it with that. I can adjust the user interface with the colors on top exactly the way as the rest of the project. So it's one part. It's the way I think picking images in an application should be. You shouldn't rely on anything externally that takes you out of the scope of your application and out of the customer engagement you have with your app with the user. So I did that. I am happy with that. I built this all in the application. This is now the final one. I removed references to the multi-image picker and the uh, default Google Flutter image picker. They're all gone from the project and it works nice. Now there's still a few tricky things I am uh, dealing with. Let's go first to the trip list here. I should be able to have an edit button here, but it isn't working yet that I can change the trip information and I can create a new trip, but not yet the edit. And that is a little bit tricky because if you create a new one, you have defaults and you can just store it into the data store. If you do an edit, you need to, especially with the image, deal with the fact, okay, I have a default image, but that is a cached image in my context. And I pick a new one, what is an asset from the photo picker, and I need to manage that. In this case, it's not that difficult. I just need to get that done, and I will in a, in a couple of days, I think. But what is more tricky is this scenario where I have a post and I want to go into the edit, and it's the work in progress because I managed to show original images here, and I actually have already that if I pick one new, it will replace. That's well, it doesn't replace, so I guess there's still something not going the way I want to have it, but. That's still a work in progress that I have the edit of the trip and the edit of the post to work as well, but that will probably be for the next episode. Now, 
as you can see, I'm smiling a lot more than I did when I found this terrible state of the image pickers. I'm happy with the result. I hope you like it. If you like it, please like and subscribe. If you don't like it, subscribe anyway, because the next video might be better for you. Well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.